Bob Tursak from Brilliant, and we're happy to be here to talk to you in our third video series today on the design phase of producing a photo book. We're here today with photographer Mark DePaulo and his producer Sage Backstrom and graphic designer Melody Dale Stevens. So today we want to talk a little bit about what it's like when you have this body of work together and you want to design a book, so where do you go? Do you design it yourself? Do you hire a designer? Is it a collaborative effort with designer, printer, yourself? It might be all of those things. So I would like to start out just by talking to Mark and Sage about two amazing books that we produced with Mark and for Mark that are now in the permanent collection of MoMA. So Mark and Sage. And, I'm mean, sorry to interrupt, but also the Getty. Uh, also the Getty. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. now the... Uh, also Museum of Photographic Arts in San Diego. So they, they keep Fantastic. They, yeah. they rolled yeah. out and accepted. Uh, Which is one of the points we made earlier, how your book is really a working agent for you that's in the background mm -hmm. and never sleeps and goes and sees all these people. So that's, that's wonderful to hear that it's in those new venues and I'm sure more venues to come. Yes. So talk a little bit about when, first of all, when did you know you were ready to produce recent work one? And then once you decided you had this body of work together that you wanted to produce in a book, how did you begin that? How did you design that, or start the process for the design? Oh, interesting that you put it that way, because for, for me it's basically how, do I, how did I avoid doing it for as long as I did? Um, and because uh, I was asked all the time, you know, you should do a book, you should do a gallery show. And I was very busy in the commercial world and um, it didn't feel like to me, all of my work was art. So I thought, this is what I do, they pay me, I, I work, I go home. But in this case, it started with the 60 Second Series and um, it, it, I saw on the back of the camera from my first image, that's art. So basically, it's, what is art to me? It needs to start there with my experience. I, I see it as art, not being an art expert or art historian, but to me it moved me into feeling that was art. Thus, you know, the beginning of my sort of art segment uh, of the last five years started there. Um, and the interesting thing is that, you know, you talk about relationships and, you know, so how do you translate this? So I got, I got this series that I'm now calling art and how do I translate that to a, a broader audience, not just me looking on the back of the camera on a, a photographic print or a computer screen or whatever. And, and that really comes from the individual. It's, it, it has to. Um, and it, you have to be audacious enough, and, you know, to be able to say that that's art. It begins with you. And if you don't believe in it, how can anybody else believe in it? So you can't just jump to design without the intent of the artist in the first place, in, in my opinion. Um, and so, and, and this is a, a relationship that is critical, the, 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 the translation. This is a team sport. This is, I may push the button, but it, there's so many other things involved, and those relationships are critical to the success of any endeavor, whether you're making a piece of music or film or, a, you know, or a, a photo book or an exhibition. It's you surround yourself with the bright people who are simpatico with the way you see things. Like this group here at Brilliant, like, and, and, and I don't use these words lightly. If it, if it weren't the success of this relationship, I wouldn't be sitting here. Mm -hmm. As other relationships dissolve or break up or whatever, they, they, these are people who understand who I am and I do things uniquely to me. And this needs to be supported by people who are capable of understanding that intent mm -hmm. and not trying to make it into another, evolve into another, you know, sort of project. And there, there, therein you get uh, friction and often the, the dissolution of relationships. And mm -hmm. so um, that, that, that's why I'm here. And this is my third or fourth project. Um, Again, you know, mm -hmm. MoMA, two, two, two of the books in MoMA, and the Getty, and uh, they're very active at the Top Museum, which is a photographic museum in, in uh, Tokyo. Um, so, you know, in broad strokes, that's what it is. It's like, choose your partner, <laughs> because if you're going to live with them, yeah. it's good that you get along and, and, yeah. in so many ways. It's very elusive, you know. 
So. You, I was thinking when you, when you were just saying that, which was really profound, there's a phenomenal, massive level of trust that goes on in successful relationships that culminate in transcendent books and projects. Or transcendent life. A transcendent life, yeah. right. Um, I, I've worked with Mel, like I say, for, for 30 or 35 years. She's much younger than I am, by the way. And uh, you know, that when Mel is on the phone with a client, I'm never wondering like, oh my goodness, you know, I hope she's careful in what she says. You know, I, I know that she's gonna handle that the same way I would. And you know, on behalf of uh, your work, I know that as a producer, Sage is fighting the battle for you all the time. And I've watched you guys work together. And that level of trust really is needed to do phenomenal things in life, whether it's a book or, or anything. Mm -hmm. But I've really enjoyed watching that in our relationship. And I've just come to realize now what a valuable treasure that is, mm -hmm. you know and that that needs to be fostered. Um, there have been times when photographers and, or designers have come to me and, and the relationship almost starts out pre uh, antagonistically, you know, on their behalf because maybe they had a bad experience in the past mm -hmm. with a printer. And I almost know right there, this isn't gonna go well and I might wanna find a way to exit that. So we either have to get past that and trust each other or find, like you just pointed out, find someone you're super comfortable with, a designer that you just know based on what they've, they've done in the past and of your conversation with them, mm -hmm. that this is gonna be a great relationship. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, then move, move to another one. Same thing with a printer, same mm -hmm. thing with an agent or, you know, or an agent looking for a photographer to represent. Well, and the trust, and then that your first conversation isn't proving yourself, it, it is listening. It is understanding what they want, it's not formulaic. Right. I love how you said that. It's not proving yourself. And that's one of the benefits of age for me is that, you know, I don't, I don't, don't have, have to do to that anymore. Yeah. Right, right. I don't yeah. want to do that anymore. And it's a silly waste of time. But um, the, the best projects are collaborative efforts, not mm -hmm. when yeah. you're just or handed yeah. a package of files and say, right. print this uh, right. um, and vice versa. You know, right. it's, it's a great thing. So that's great. Different people have yeah. different approaches to it. I think, you know, for me, it's a team sport. I surround myself with brilliant people uh -huh. I, that, my that team are excited stronger. about what you're doing. Right. right, exactly, and yeah. that was what is fostered our relationship mm -hmm. here. Is you know Bob's mm -hmm. sort of understanding of what I'm trying to communicate, and, and feels that it's important. It's funny because mm -hmm. recent work one and two both you know uh, printed here and 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 taken uh, great care of in that process uh, have been. I get letters from the curator at like the Getty Museum or the MoMA and saying that, you know, we're, we are so pleased to have this in our permanent collection library for mm -hmm. uh, s students and scholars and other photographers. And I joke with Sage, I go, it's a picture book. What do you mean scholars? Mm -hmm. But that's not for me to say, you know, and I think that that's sort of the understanding of adding to the dialogue of photography or books that even in a simplistic book like Recent Work 1 and 2, it has something to say and that nurturing of the, 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 the theme or the story mm -hmm. is so critical to its presentation mm -hmm. in the outside world. And if you don't get it, mm -hmm. then you're, you're, you're talking a different language. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know the message or, you know. So the, the idea for me is the retention of the original um, theme and message and, uh, uh, and dialogue of photography in, in, in a printed form. Mm -hmm. you know? I think what's also brilliant about working with you, Mark, and what makes you really unique is that I feel like, you know, some photographers or artists, let's say, have very big egos and they feel like their opinion is the, the ultimate opinion that is the final sort of say that's gonna go to press. But what's so great about working with you is there are no bad ideas. He, even if it's not something that we necessarily go with, anything that I'm throwing out or that Bob's throwing out or working with Peter in terms of you know, profiling for printing, we feel free enough to be able to throw all these ideas into the pile because we know that ultimately it's your opinion that's going to make the final you decision. You have to be secure in that too. And I say right. in response to the people who think that they know all and they are all, print it yourself. <laughs> and until you can, listen to these people. Because if you don't know that translation as well mm -hmm. as they do, they do it every single day. Mm -hmm. I shoot every single day, right? So when I'm shooting, I push the button when I want to. The, <laughs> you know, for people that you know, think that they can do everything and you know, it's all profile and it's ready, just like you know, push the red and mm -hmm. let it go. It's mm -hmm. like, 
I, it's the, it's their own failing, mm -hmm. you know. To me, you know, mm -hmm. should you have ego? Absolutely. Why mm -hmm. would you present art unless you felt like you had something unique to say? But you, you can't play every position, you know what I mean? You can't be the race car driver and the engineer. You're driving the car. How do you engineer the use of that car? It's like, let them do their job. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's true. And you know, the, the printing part of it actually is, is the easy part. Uh, getting inside the customer's head, would you agree, Mel, is really the hard part. It is. You know, yeah. really understanding and for the, the photographer, for the artist to explain what their vision is for the piece, how they're gonna use it, who the audience is gonna be, how they're gonna distribute it. Those things affect design, you know, absolutely. would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because you wanna, you wanna have a window into what story, what experience you want the reader to have. Yeah. Um, and in their opinion, what are right. they looking to accomplish? It affects the way we look at paper, you know, the kind mm -hmm. of paper we would do. Mm -hmm. It affects color, accent color. It affects mm -hmm. how you're gonna reproduce the piece. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember my first book that I did with George Tice um, I didn't spend enough time talking to him and I took his prints and I, I thought, wow, these things need more contrast, you know, and I, and I looked at it from my perspective mm -hmm. and I showed him the first set of proofs and he said, oh, you got way too much contrast. And, mm -hmm. and then I talked to him about his approach to printmaking and he really spent a lot of time with me, which was a gift. And the next set of proofs was on. I should have slowed down there. And I think that that's, that's really especially important at the design phase because it's so hard to backtrack once, you, once you're at the printer even and say, wow, this looks a little harsh or that's a little too soft, you know. And then uh, I would add on to that, that prototyping is a very inexpensive thing these days. You know, when we talk about doing a book, well, what would it look like with that kind of coding on it? I don't know, let's run a digital proof, put that kind of coding on it and see what we all think, you know. And um, so that's, that's valuable too, is actually taking concepts and doing just little mock-ups, you know, just to see if it feels right. A lot of times when we're so sure these things are going to work together and then we see the concept and go, ah, that's, <laughs> that's, yes. the, yeah. that's not what I wanted. Yeah, and even when it comes to font, uh, font oh, choice yeah. Yeah. and uh, yeah. space on the page and mm -hmm. sometimes until you see it. Right. Yeah. Right. On a screen it's a lot different. Sometimes it's just incredibly different than yeah. to see that. Yeah. It's that almost sample. like uh, likened to uh, 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 musical composition. You know, you can, you know, a multi-track recording. You record different instruments on different tracks and then you mix them together with volume and tone and then make an entire piece. So it's sort like of like this is analogy. a multi-track, yeah. yeah. multi-faceted uh, pursuit and endeavor. And so, you know, again, it's sort of like at the end, does it sound good? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's very, very right. similar to And I, I think going along with that analogy, like seeing it in print is the sound. That's you the know what I mean? Like so That's often, like when we were going through recent work and recent work too, and I, we had put together the original pairings and layout with Alex Ramos, who helped curate both books um, from the Leica Gallery at San Francisco. I had made certain pairings, and then when we made Xerox copies, I just went to FedEx and made like you know some crappy little Xerox po copies. We put them on the floor, and we would live with them for a little bit. And certain things started to not work yeah. all of a sudden, yeah. you know. So I think it's interesting um, and important to live and breathe with like the tangible object, and not just be stuck and sitting there on the computer when mm -hmm. you're going through the design, and not be afraid to shift gears or change things. Yes. Up. Yes. Until it's like oh, off yeah. to the print. <laughs> Until it's printed. <laughs> exactly. People get nervous and, and in that they, they tend to want to come to a decision and be a, the authority. Like, okay, this is the way it is. When often you have to take a deep breath collectively and yeah. just, yeah. Li like Great. you said, let it live a little bit and then move when it's appropriate to move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, Mark, you're really brilliant at that. <laughs> brilliant. I just keep using that word. Um, you're really brilliant at that in that you're not a, the kind of artist or photographer where you go, okay, this image is the cover, mm -hmm. or these are the images that need to be most prominent or important in the design mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. We're always flipping things over, bringing things to the front mm -hmm. to just sort of see what then naturally arises because it's, like, it's almost like dough, like you know, making bread. Like the more you need it, the more you care for it and cultivate it. The, more incredible it's going to be. Just surround yourself with smart people. Don't think you can do it all on your own. That's really right. my best advice. You know, it, uh, you, you need people who do what they do every day, mm -hmm. year after year, so that they are up on different typefaces, the designs of new typefaces and mm -hmm. different trends or you know, anti-trends or 
you know, just your own spirit as a designer, like that's a, uh, it's a craft and an art unto itself. And, they, uh, you know. and they can bring that question of, okay, this is what you wanted, this, here's what you wanted, this is a suggestion, could we consider this? Right. Um, and have them, just personality, you know, you know. Yeah, be willing to listen to that. Yeah, and maybe. But come if you don't up have respect for the team, then better. you have problems, and that's what Bob was talking <laughs> about. Maybe wanting to go out the back door, just sort of like I don't know if I want to do this one. Yeah. You know, it's important uh, the, the relationship. And I, if you just allow me to interject something here, which is really very critical, and uh, there are great advances being made in medical and psychological science right now about human uh, vision and perception and response. So, like uh, you know, cognitive psychological response to things or a neurobiological response uh, the, the, to color let's say we think like oh red is red mm -hmm. we do not see the same mm -hmm. we are each individuals as uh, it relates to DNA and uh, the nature nurture and also our, our upbringing and it, everything we see is associative and it relates to our memory we mm -hmm. see nothing primary it goes through memory first our vision goes through memory first and then with that in that context then comes out as something that we see I, I don't know how you grew up we didn't grow up in the same house mm -hmm. we didn't go to the same school we're not the same gender we don't you know all these things contribute to the individuality so first off it's got to be are we seeing in such a way where you what you're thinking mm -hmm. or what you're sequencing Right? Does it make sense to me as an entirely different person? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Like, mm -hmm. either we go like, eh, I don't know, or like, wow, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have. That, that's crazy. That's mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. So that's the first question: is understand the individuality, especially of the strong artist. They're seeing very specifically mm -hmm. and wanting to communicate under mm -hmm. those circumstances. Mm -hmm. So that's the beginning of the relationship. Yeah. Are yeah. we mm -hmm. simpatico? Yeah. In, in that relationship, how much of design do you feel is sequencing and curation? Because I feel like often I think of, you know, photography, like a photographic series, like a bunch of files in a folder. And then I think of design, I think of layout, typeface, relationship, like how mm -hmm. much is curation and sequencing? Because obviously that's such an important element in photography. It is an important element. And maybe and the most important element. <laughs> some people have very strong opinions about what that should be, and then some allow more input into that but yeah i think that's very important and it's helpful for me if there is some thought to that ahead of time to bring something right so that, to, to, to start, start the relationship be yes. truthful in the yeah. beginning of the relationship yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. without that base if there's no, nothing it's just jumping in and hoping yeah you're on and the being track stuck. Yeah. 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 No, exactly. And I think it's important too because often, or them being willing to have the conversation a few times before the project is started. So, where there's that development of thought. Agreed. The development of sequencing. Absolutely. Being willing to have like a little bit of a dialogue before we even get started. Right. Date a little bit before you're in the exactly. relationship. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> See how well yeah. it goes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, I think too, going off of what you were saying about one's personal experiences when you take the picture you were there so mark has the context of the person he was working with where he was what that day was like what you know crappy phone call he had with his you know friend or whatever you know what i mean whereas when you're coming and looking at the images you don't have that piece of context mm -hmm. and so to not listen to someone's objective experience of that image is just it's it's dumb like mm -hmm. you you need that dialogue you mm -hmm. need that um that working of that because I might see a formal relationship or you know a narrative that Mark would never see because he shot one image in Tokyo and one image in Barcelona mm -hmm. but when you bring those two together it becomes a completely different almost mm -hmm. hybrid experience that he would never otherwise think of yeah. which That's is so true. exciting yeah, that is exciting and then when you get to the print stage the idea like I often shoot not looking through the camera I've been shooting the same camera since I'm 12 years old and I'm very comfortable with it in my hand. I know what's happening. Yeah, there it is. There's one of them. So the idea is that, you know, I'll shoot without looking through the camera. If you try to regulate me and corral me, it's not a good idea, you know. And to try to normalize, one of the greatest things about here, brilliant, is that they don't try to make me into something normal. They allow me to be the person who shoots while not looking through the camera, right. for instance. And like, I often don't care about focus right. 
because the emotional content in an image, your the human sight or an image that's mm -hmm. printed or projected or whatever, mm -hmm. is in the out of focus areas. Mm -hmm. And this is a medically proven fact mm -hmm. by the, you know, sort of the, the, the neural transmitters. They're able to track this now, mm -hmm. what is emotional and where that is in the frame. And so if you try to have me like, well, Mark, you should put a picture that's more sharper here. Mm. Like these guys are going like, whoa, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. That's wild. It's not sharp, but boy, it's so emotional that, you know, mm -hmm. and these are all deliberate, very deliberate things. Mm -hmm. So again, there are people who tend to want to skew to their own sensibilities and others like people here, like Bob and his mm -hmm. team, because it always trickles down from mm -hmm. the top, you know, of being open, creative people. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's an environment. And they mm -hmm. can also do the other, you know, the, the very critical work of those type of artists, you right. know, so. Um, one, thi one thing I want to say too that's really, really critical about these books is that often with museums and institutions, the, the curators, they don't have time to meet with us, mm -hmm. right, or sit down and look through a box of prints. They're always traveling, like people are busy or whatever, so the, the conduit or the way to get into these museums and institutions is the book. So if that's not correct, mm -hmm. you get one shot, and if they don't like it, mm -hmm. you'll never hear from them again. Mm -hmm unless there's maybe new turnover at the institution. So the incredible thing about making these monographs with Brilliant is that the design serves the photography. The photography doesn't serve the design and the printing serves the photography and mm -hmm. elevates it. Mm -hmm. So that way when you know an institution contacts us and wants us to bring in prints, the translation between the book and the fine art print is there. They already know already. the work. Yeah. They already know the work. And They're not sitting there going, oh. Making right? their yes. job easier. Such a great point. Such a great point. Yeah. 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 Their job becomes easier because it's, I have sort of like a catalog right. of how they can incorporate your work into their sensibilities. Mm -hmm. But it has to be accurate. Yeah, it has to be accurate. And the other thing, too, that I think is really, I think, and we had this conversation with Bob actually last night, is that the best design in what you do is when it serves the photography mm -hmm. when there's a melding of the two because mm -hmm. I, I it, the worst thing is when you open a photographic book and it's brilliant imagery but there's you know big typeface mm -hmm. and things and like the design becomes more important than yeah than the yeah. photographic journey yeah. Yeah. yeah another point i want to make too is that the book has become a great way to cultivate new collectors so a lot of people, you know, when you're spending, you know, two, three, four, five, six, however many thousands of dollars on a fine art photographic print and you're not really sure which one you want, what exactly the translation is, they want something tangible so that they can have that intimate experience. Mm -hmm. So the book in that way too has been such a great way for people to kind of dip their toes in and go, okay, let me live with this for a little bit. I'm gonna set it on my dining room table and then I'll get an email four or five months ago and saying, Hey Sage, like it's been sitting next to my bed. I look at it every night, like number 45 or whatever it is, has mm -hmm. just like stuck with me. I really need it in my living room. I want to live with it. You know, I want it to be a part of my life. Um, so that's another way too that the monographs have been so It's also, amazing. you know, like going back to my, you know, primarily fashion shooting days. So those five letters, Vogue, um, you take a photograph and like it's a nice photograph and it's very mm -hmm. well done but like when you add those five letters it becomes something exponentially more mm -hmm. so the idea of publication like editorial like something in print something tangible now you've got the ability of a photographer where it's only in the computer it's instagram and the you know rapid scrolling and the sort of mess of images and then they've got their sort of own the book is like it, potentially their own publication it validates the image because it's in print it's not mm -hmm. just on a screen that you can scroll through mm -hmm. so quickly so now you've got that the impact of tangibility that validates your work mm -hmm. as something that exists mm -hmm. then you talk about you know the economics which i don't like to talk about of being a photographer but like you know one of the large parts of uh, you know segments of my work is print sales well when they see something in a book and they go oh it's in a book and it's in a museum I, I want that print, or can I afford that, or whatever? Mm -hmm. And this is like such, a, that's a, the missing part, because people, it's so easy just to make a post. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not the same thing. That, yeah. Actually, too, I can say, like, in the first few years before we made recent work, 
And Mark had all of these exhibitions, like in Tokyo and Los Angeles and New York. And the first question out of people's mouths was, well, where's his book? Can I buy his book? Right. Does he have a book? Yeah. Like, can I, can I have this work in a book so that mm -hmm. I can decide which print I want? And for a couple of years, I had to say, oh, no, I'm sorry. Like, nothing's out yet. And so it's a validation almost of like a, being a, a professional or it a puts real you on validated. The grid. Yeah. Right, yeah. it puts yeah. you on the radar. Mm -hmm. Now I have collectors who have said to me more than one who say, now I'm, because you're, I'm your patron, uh, I'm in the Museum of Modern Art by mm. association. Yeah, right. Which right. I love. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, yeah. I didn't think of it that way, but it's another, because my name is in the book because I was a patron of the book and the book is in the museum. I'm in the museum huh. as a patron, yeah. you know, yeah. and I thought that was wonderful that the, yeah. the feeling of uh, you know camaraderie right. or, the, or family, you know, yeah. well, wonderful. This has been an amazing conversation. I really thank you both very much mm -hmm. for agreeing to sit down and, and be here, and Mel, you as well. Thank you. Um, we talked a lot about design and the purpose of a book. I realize we haven't talked a lot about the mechanics of design, mm -hmm. and I think the next video, what we'll do is we'll do like the top ten things to avoid, mm -hmm. you know, just yeah. to, just to give people, you know, the, from our years together, of, of how many times we run against different things that impede the process mm -hmm. or that cost the client money. So mm -hmm. we'll we'll cover the mechanics of it, but I can't, like I said, I can't thank you enough for today. Our pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.